gonna get the recording started. Just saying that one more time for anyone whose camera's on. Make sure you're good. We'll be going live next week. Hello to everyone to the Women's Voices Now community, both near and far. Welcome to the 10th Women's Voices Now Film Festival, The Unintended Consequences of Our Progress. My name is Heidi bash -Herod and I proudly serve as the Executive Director of Women's Voices Now, where we use film to drive social change that advances girls and women's rights globally. I cannot believe that this day has arrived, that we are here to celebrate the incredible filmmakers and their achievements who competed in this film festival. We had films from over 28 countries from all over the world, tackling so many different subjects from so many different angles. I am again, as always in awe of the achievements in film that I got to witness and learning about the filmmakers as well and their journey. It is a pleasure to be joined by all of you. Women's Voices Now, our YouTube community that we're live broadcasting is now over 300,000 people around the world. So we are truly a global community and so delighted to have you here. I would like to first thank our sponsors of the festival, American Eagle Outfitters, Monster Energy Cares, Sony Entertainment Pictures, the Lantos Foundation for Human Rights and Justice, the Dudley Doherty Foundation, and our newest uh, sponsor, the Independent Documentary Association. We are so grateful for your support of this important work. We cannot do this without you. I would also like to acknowledge the Women's Voices Now team members, Chelsea and Lamine and Becky and Erin. All of you are an integral part of making all of this happen and Bijan as well, our film festival coordinator. I am just honored to work with all of you and I'm delighted to be celebrating with you today. I want to uh, just take a brief moment to go back to what our theme about is about, the unintended consequences of our progress. We've been working at this women's rights th theme thing for more than half a century in earnest in, in the world as a global community. And what we saw in the films this year is that women have made a tremendous amount of progress in access to education, economic opportunities, political representation, uh, just having their own voice. But with all of this change comes comes new problem problems actually. What does happen when a woman is able to reach her full human potential and live in dignity? She has a mind of her own. She has an idea of where she wants her life to go. So actually we're at this critical moment in, of time in women's rights where the, ch the next chapter is not yet written. What happens when the person you've been fighting for for so long has her rights, has her ability to, to march out into her own life. We don't know where the story is going to end. And when we don't know what's happening and where that story is going to end comes discomfort, change, uh, a, perhaps a perceived attack on one's culture. And with that comes so much disruption and, and, and challenge. And so while we've made so much progress, it turns out that with that progress has come new challenges, new consequences. And a lot of the films that we selected to this festival started that conversation amongst each other. And I hope that many of you who, who purchased tickets to the, to the festival this year had the opportunity to really delve into those films. Remember they're available until April 30th. All competing films are available until April 30th. So you have time to watch the films that tell the story of the unintended consequences of our progress. I also want to acknowledge that we're in a very difficult moment at our time in global human history and we have have a choice of whether to move forward with um, hopelessness or with great hope. And I choose every day from the work that I do with Women's Voices now to continue moving forward with great hope, because I see how women in the face of tremendous adversity show resilience and show that the promise of tomorrow does belong to them and to our children and to all of those who walk forward with us. So while I acknowledge that we are having tremendous time of upheaval right now, I'm so delighted that you decided to join us today at Women's, at Women's Voices now for a moment of celebration 
collaboration and to and to really take a moment to see the achievements that our filmmakers have made in their film projects, the stories they're telling, and to just really be um, emboldened to 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 be positive as we move forward through this difficult time throughout the world. And we follow the example of the women whose stories are being told. With that being said, I am very excited to present to all of you the Women's Voices Now Women Making Waves Awardee of 2024. Today we are joined by a, a groundbreaking individual woman. Her name is Adea Asayed. She is the former president of the Bahrain Journalists Association. She's currently the editor-in-chief of the Times of Bahrain. She was the first female to be elected to chair the Bahrain Journalists Association since its establishment in 2000. And during her presidency, she campaigned for higher administrative posts for women in the field of the press and media. She won the 2019 Female Arab Journalist of the Year Award from the London Arabia Organization, a theme that event uh, a theme and event that focused on ending honor killings. She currently writes for several regional newspapers and has been the most active female journalist in the Arabian Gulf region, advocating for peace, bringing an end to extremism and terrorism to create a more stable and secure Middle East where all peoples and religions coexist in peace. She's appeared on the BBC, Sky News Arabia, Al Haddath, MBC, I24, and France 24, defending her belief in peace, women's empowerment, and highlighting how women should not be sidelined in the political arena. Adea has also worked as a media advisor for Bahrain's government and served as a spokesperson for Bahrain's parliamentary and municipal elections in 2006. She is a founding member of the Bahrain Human Rights Watch Society and was its spokesperson. And so without further ado, Adea, I would invite you to take the stage, the screen, and join me here to accept your Women Making Waves Award. Thank you very much, Heidi, for the lovely introduction. It is my honor to be accepting the Women Making Waves Award, and it means the world to me. As I sit here in the Middle East and this award comes from another continent, it just says that we're in good hands. If we have organizations supporting each other across continents, we are in good hands. And uh, once again, it means the world to me. Thank you very much for to you, Heidi, and to the team for giving me this honor to have my voice heard in tonight's event. And today's event, it's evening now. Um, I happen to be, of course, at the U.S. Ambassador's House celebrating Passover. And during the difficult times we go through, I feel that celebrating these moments with each other makes a big difference. Uh, what saddens me is uh, while we are all celebrating and happy, and I can't keep the smile off my face, but during this moment, as we celebrate, there are women that aren't seeing justice. There is a woman somewhere in the world worried that if she doesn't have the scarf on her head, she could be killed. And that continues to happen in Iran. It um, breaks my heart when I remember, and I know that it, it continues to happen, when I know that an Afghani woman, a filmmaker, uh, filmed herself when Taliban took over. And she said she was running away and she said, uh, save us, Taliban are taking over. So in Iran, we see women who get killed on daily basis because of a scarf or cover on the hair. In Afghanistan, we see an extremist ideology um, fighting women in the most brutal manner, demeaning women, belittling women. And then, of course, in the Middle East, in the Middle East, what breaks my heart is there is a woman in Israel waiting for her child who was kidnapped months ago and has been taken as a hostage by a terrorist organization like Hamas. She's sitting in her house crying and waiting for her child to return. As that woman cries, so does a Palestinian woman who has lost her children due to collateral damage that this war has brought. 